Hey there fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee and welcome to Legacy Studio. In today's video, we turn off the lights and see what light does the best. Check this out. So I had a user comment come in and they asked me, hey Tim, what light does good in low light conditions? And they were talking specifically about my little tiny lights that I love to utilize when I'm on my little vlogs, my little vlogging trips. This one is the Wheelie Light, uh, the Wee Light, the RG, RB08P, an amazing light. Look at how small it is. The only problem is the major flaw of this light is that you cannot run it on power while it is charging. That is the truly unfortunate part of this. Now, the awesome thing about it is it's literally the size of a cell phone, if not smaller. I'd say it's about the size of a wallet, truth be told. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic, just truly a fault of it that it cannot run, uh, it cannot be on while you're utilizing its power to charge it. Then we have this awesome guy. This is the Hagibus King 10, uh, also an RGB light. This thing is just a beast, and I, I'm totally into it. And uh, so I got these both uh, charged up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off all of our lights in the room. It's going to get super dark in here. Yeah, You might see my face just based on the lighting off of all my screens here. But then we'll do some lighting comparisons, flash these lights around the room, and let you see about how bright they can actually get in a very dark environment. All right, so far I've turned off all the lights in here except for in the back and, of course, the light that is my rim light. So let's go ahead and turn off the drone desk in the back here. So that'll darken things up a little bit. All right, so I'm starting off with the Wii light here. Um, and this one's right now set at 11% at 6,000 Kelvin. Uh, as you can see, it's doing a really great job of lighting my face even at this distance. Let's go ahead and start strengthening the brightness till it gets to 100%, uh, and you'll just see it's going to blast me out here. Uh, more importantly, just keep an eye on the background and stuff like that as things begin to light up more and more. The camera is already set to one exposure. All right, I'm pretty sure we're running 100% now. Yep, at 6,000 Kelvin. So let's just go ahead and move this around my face and around the room here as we begin to light things. <clears throat> and you can just see how much this little light just seems to absolutely crank on everything around, including my very bald head. But when it comes down to it, it's doing a really great job of capturing the need that I would have. So if I was to set this down somewhere, let's just try and balance it on that thing right there. Uh, it's pretty vibrant. And then I can take another light here, which I'll utilize in a second, and we'll see if we can create a balanced lighting condition uh, that you might be able to use in a vlog setup. But that is that light right there. Uh, let's quickly just try and change up the Kelvin a little bit here. Uh, I can't even see it's so bright. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can change it to, here's 3200 Kelvin, get this nice deep glow and once again I'm running it at a hundred percent even in pitch black right now I would say that a hundred percent truly is not necessary uh, with the settings that I have on this camera let me go ahead and try and see if I can calm this down here uh, we'll go to 5500 and I'm also going to go ahead and turn this down until it actually starts to look a little bit more correct in the camera so hang on as I start turning this down here because these cameras are set to run uh, lighting in this room with ginormous lights on and just with my little desk on the side here that you can see in the shot here this is the only stuff that's on right now if I hide myself the only thing you're seeing is a little bit of light on my forehead here but if I bring this in you can see this is doing a really really great job and the percentage of it right now is only 35%. So the Wii Light, like I said, an incredible light, nice and tiny, easily would fit in your pocket, easily would fit in your bag. Only problem is, cannot run it on power. What a stinking issue, because this is such a great light. Let's go ahead and turn it off, and let's try the Hagibus Light now. All right, the Hagibus Light, starting off strong, <laughs> very strong. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down here. The Hagibus Light is running at uh, 25, 100 Kelvin right now, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it to uh, until it looks balanced in, in the light here. 
So at this, we're looking at 17% uh, power right now just to get this out of the Hagibis. And let's go ahead and change its uh, white balance to be a little bit more uh, clean with the camera here. So about right there, give or take. And uh, right there, we're looking at 17% uh, at 4,000 Kelvin, apparently, to get that. And that looks like a pretty balanced uh, lighting scenario there. Let's go ahead and change cameras again. With this camera, I might change the white balance a little bit more. There we go. Now we're at uh, 4,700 Kelvin uh, to get this light. Now this is only right now at 17%, so let's do the same thing. Let's start cranking it up here. <clears throat> And uh, we'll, we'll go straight to 100%. <laughs> Start shining it in the background there. I do feel like that that's a bit more powerful, but that's just me. But you can see that that's just pretty intense. You can plug this into a uh, power bank. You can plug it into a wall. You can run it off of power in general. It does a really awesome job. Um, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to try and do a studio setup with only these two lights uh, to work with. And what I mean is uh, sometimes the best way to get the shot you're looking for is to set up your lighting in the right way to do it. So I'm going to try and set it up here just really, really simply and stupidly and see if we can create an effect that will give off, give off that effect. So I'm going to set one over here. Can that come out? There we go. I'm going to set one over here on a little bar I have over here. Let's go ahead and turn off this light. And uh, this one we're going to go ahead and have it be our, uh, not our key light, this will be our fill light. Our key light will be this big Hagibis guy here. And we're going to set him off over to the other side here. Uh, and uh, I'm thinking somewhere over here at the moment. So right there, just by setting those two lights, you can see about how much that affects your picture. Now maybe you want to do something where you want to tailor this lighting just a little bit more uh, to meet your needs. So I'm going to turn my power down on my Wii light here, the tiny one, down to 10%. And we'll put it back up here and we'll let it shine. And let's see what kind of picture we get. So we're starting to see a little bit more darkness on this side. Now this light is pretty much dead square in front with the camera. Usually you want lights at about a 45% angle. So I would probably have it a little bit more off to the side a bit more. Um, but let's go ahead and turn it down here. I am getting seriously blinded here. And even, even with the lights turned on on a smaller level here, I would turn this one up. Actually, let's do this. Let's try the opposite here. Let's take the Hagibis and make it our fill light now. And now we're going to go ahead and take the Wii light. We'll pump it up and see if it can also work as a key light. So we'll bring it up until it's just starting to peak. And we'll set it up here where I had it. And now we can compensate with what all this darkness here by turning up the Hagibis. So we'll just start turning this up very slowly just to give a little bit of light to this side of the face. And there you go. I mean, I can tailor this to, to meet my needs. And usually what you want to do is you want it at a, a little high and you want it at a 45 degree angle just enough so you get a triangle right here in your face. So technically right there is kind of what we're looking for to get that really nice shot about right there to get that really nice looking shot. And that looks really, really good. And if we turn off the Hagibis, come on now. Hagibis has a kind of a difficult power button, to power switch on the top that's pretty tucked into it. That's just this light without any extra light around doing anything. The other thing that we can do is we can also tailor this a little bit more to um, have different color temperatures. So let's say that we want to utilize the other camera here. Let's go ahead and switch over to camera two. And uh, we'll, we'll turn our attention, still looking at the screen ahead of me here. So we can see that we got a lot of shadow over here. This light that I have over here is going to take care of that. We can see we got a nice lit looking thing going on over here. I got some blue hue going on from uh, the lights that are mounted into my uh, thing over here. But we'll take the Hagibis and we're going to go ahead and change it to be an RGB. All right, and then let's change it to be also a blue. So we'll go ahead and change it to blue and we'll crank it at, uh, uh, we'll do about 35% right now. Let's set it up and see what it does to the side of my face there. Isn't that cool? It just gives it that really cool little just push of color. And I mean, you can immediately then change the colors to whatever you see fit. And, you know, just tailor it to, 
to what you want to do to to make the kind of shot you're looking of. And and this is just with two little tiny lights in a com almost completely pitch black room. This is what excites me. If you feel I apparently get the hiccups in the middle of my YouTube videos. If you think that you cannot get a good quality broadcast uh, with just two little lights, I'm proving you wrong right here and right now because the content that I can create with just two little tiny lights like these is just fine. You have to learn how to control light. You have to learn how to make light work for you. And when you do that, that's when you're going to start succeeding. That's the truth. And it's just a matter of time and practice. But as you get there, you know what? You can really create some really cool stuff with next to no effort at all and just two little lights. And so as a vlogger, when I choose to vlog, usually I just want a camera that can light me in a dark scenario. So I'm not really thinking about adding color or pop to the side. But if I really wanted to, I could. I could, and I could power this thing up strong enough and put it on a shelf somewhere or something, hang it off of something, and then lock it off, and there you go. You got this really great color rim light going on there that would look really, really cool. And it's so intense, it's really, really bright. It'll do the job. These are excellent lights. Now, once again, I still say that the Hagibus uh, King 10 is really, really great because it can run off of power. That means you can leave it up for however long. Now, I've tested the Hagibus King 10. It'll run for two and a half hours uh, before its battery runs out from 100% to 0%. Uh, the Wii Lite, I have not tested that, but um, I would I would say I have seen it go... Now, that, like I said, that is at full power. Uh, I would say that the, the Wii Lite will do probably about the same. I think I might have gotten three hours out of it, but I don't think I was running it at full power. So, obviously, if you're not running it at full power, it should last a bit longer. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer any questions I can for you. But once again, I mean, this is competing against my studio lights. And these are very small, so they're letting off very hard shadows. But I'm um, just look at what you can create. Look at just what a little bit of time and a little bit of tailoring can do to make a shot. Now, I would change their position. If I could change their height, I would. But even if you're, if you're a vlogger and you decide that you want to do a video in your hotel room, uh, and, and in the moment that you're shooting in your hotel room, you, you just have really miserable light, and you just need something really quick to get your story across. This is working just fine. And not only just fine, but with either one of these lights, I can come in here and I can simply tell it that I want to change a color, change a, 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 a hue, a saturation, and you can build whatever you want out of two lights. And technically, you can even get away with one, but two lights helps you if you're working in this kind of a scenario where you can get that harsh light, that's that's the key light, and then you can get that fill light with a different color or with another intensity or just with a simple fill with the same Kelvin, so you just get this nice little balance. That's what I try to do when I use my big lights um, every day. And yet, this right here could easily work for streaming. Now, they're blinding. Let me tell you, you really don't want to stare in these lights for a long period of time, unlike a softbox. But um, if you're shooting a video on the fly, uh, if you just need to light a place that's super dark, or maybe you want to highlight something like um, like something special on your on your shelf, I can take this, and, and without you really knowing what it is, I can point it into my shelf, uh, or I can set it here beneath some of my items on my shelf and there you go I've lit up some of the items on my shelf I can stick it around or behind things to to give you know they're so small you're just not aware when you can take this and literally toss it pretty much anywhere to get an effect it's <laughs> it's really awesome what you can choose to do with these things and so I strongly suggest if you don't have one of these in your kit put it in your kit. And if I'm going to suggest which one more, uh, I love the size of this little guy because it's just, I mean, it can't even compare to my smartphone that I carry with me everywhere I go. Um, it's so tiny and obviously it's a great flashlight, but on top of that, it's a great production light. 
So would I suggest this one? Yes, if you don't need to run it on power. If you're planning on doing long-term videos, if you're planning on setting it up in a permanent situation to help light your desk, if you're doing like a top-down camera shot or something like that, the Hagabus King 10 is really, really great uh, and can run off of a Type-C connector, can charge really fast, and can last two and a half hours of full power. So that would be the one I would suggest. All right, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that that was uh, interesting to you. Now, let me go ahead, and since we're wrapping up our video here, let's go ahead and turn everything off and return on the studio lights just so you can see the difference of what happens here. Now, studio lights are large softbox functions, so there's going to be a lot more that's going to happen as we turn things back on here. Um, now, I don't have my other light turned on, so this is just what you're going to see here. That other light saves everything here and gives me a rim. But when you turn everything on, this is what I get. Um, and that's the importance of soft boxes. They create soft shadows, unlike these little guys, which are going to create hard shadows. So that's what you need to be aware of when you use guys like these. You need to understand you're not going to be getting soft shadows with these. The only way to work a soft shadow is to utilize a very, very large light source. You can take these and you can bounce them off of a blanket or something like that and make a large light source out of them, but they're not all that powerful for that extent. They'll blind you, I can guarantee that. They will blind you half to death, but um, yeah. Y you've been fairly warned. Once again, the Hagabus King 10, excellent, excellent light, can run off power, uh, charges really well, and can last two and a half hours at a full charge. Or the Wii Light perfect for carrying around in your camera kit something super small and if you're just doing something in pitch black maybe if you're doing a vlog in your car um, you don't want to turn on those lights on the top of your car properly point this at you set it on your dash it's going to give you a lot better light a lot cleaner light uh white balanced light for your camera just just a much better setup overall all right god bless you guys we'll see you next time right here on legacy studio thank you so much for watching hopefully that was helpful to you guys see you later